Yeah. Lock that door. Yeah. And then stand on the other side of it until I until I knock for you. Okay. Just lock. No, you can't grab that. Lock the door. Sit on the Here. Yeah. Yeah. school shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing great. I feel so awesome about the music. The album is coming out February 11th. I'm doing the fashion show February 11th at Madison Square Garden. We're dropping the album the, that February 12th that morning. It's like, yeah. 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 Oh, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Yeah, it feels like good. It feels like real, <clears throat> I don't know, just yay, Apple, Steve Jobs type music, you know, like, yeah, like, so my next single, I wanted you to tweet it. It's the, it's a Good Friday, it's a Dropping as a Good Friday song, so that's why I'm calling you, that I wanted you to put the song out. All right. Like, um, what would people, I guess it would just be people would be like, why is this happening? Well, the re I think it has something to do with it, probably. Well, the reason, the reason why it, it would be happening is because it has a very controversial line at the beginning of the song about you. What does it say? Okay, so it says, and the song is so, so dope, and I've literally sat with my wife, with my whole management team, with everything, and try to rework this line. Re I've thought about this line for eight months. I've had this line, and I've tried to rework it every which way. And the, the, the original way that I thought about it is the best way, but it's the most controversial way. So it's, it's, it's going to go Eminem a little bit, so can you brace yourself for a second? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, it says, wait a second, you sound sad. No, I don't think it's mean. Okay, then let, then let me hear it. Okay. It says, um, and the funny thing is, when I first played it and my wife uh, heard it, she was like, huh? What? That's too crazy, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, when Ninja from um, uh, D. Atwood heard it, he was like, oh, my God, this is the craziest shit. This is why I love Kanye, blah, 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 that kind of thing. And now it's like my wife's favorite fucking line. I just want to give you some premise of that, right? Okay. Okay. So it says, to all my South Side niggas that know me best, I feel like Taylor Swift might owe me sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. Okay. Yeah, oh, well, this is the thing where I'm calling you because you've got an army. You own a country of motherfucking two billion people, basically, that if you felt that it's funny and cool and like hip hop and felt like, you know, just the college dropout and the artist like, yay, that you love, then I think that people would be like way into it. And that's why I think it's super genius to to have you be the one that says, oh, I like this song a lot, like, yeah, whatever, you know, this is cool, whatever, it's like, you know, like, I got, like, shit on my album where I'm like, I bet me and Ray J will be friends if we ain't love the same bitch. Oh <laughs> like, like, I mean, yeah. I need to think about it because I just need to, like, you know, you hear something for the first time and you just need to think about it. Yeah. Um, because it is absolutely crazy. I'm glad it's not mean, though. It doesn't feel mean, mm. um, but like, oh my god, the build-up you gave it, I thought it was going to be like, that stupid dumb bitch, like, but it's not. Mm. Um, so, I don't know, I mean, the launch thing, I think, I think it would be kind of confusing to people, but I definitely like, I definitely think that when I'm asked about it, of course, I'd be like, yeah, I'm the biggest fan, I love that, I think it's hilarious. But, um, yeah, I didn't yeah. think about it. Yeah, you don't have to do, you don't have to do the launch or any tweet. That was just an extra idea I had, like, but 
not you don't if you think that that's cool then it's cool if not i mean we are launching the shit like on um just good fridays on soundcloud on the site shit like that but i um um you know the thing about me is like um anything that i do becomes like a feminist thing piece and if i launch it they're gonna be like wow like this thing like they'll just turn it into something that I think if I launch it, it honestly, like, I think it'll be less cool. Because like, I think if I launch it, it, it adds this le level of criticism. Because having that many followers and having that many eyeballs on me right now, like, people are just looking for me to do something dumb or stupid or lame. And it's, like, almost, I don't know, like, I kind of feel like people would try to make it negative if it came from me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I try to be super self-aware about where I am, and I feel like, I feel like right now, I'm like this close to overexposure. Oh, well this, this one is, uh, I think this is a really cool thing to have. Uh, I know, definitely. I think it's like a compliment, kind yeah. of. <laughs> yeah. I, I had this line where I said, and my wife really didn't like this one, because we tried to make it nicer. So I said, as far as my South Side niggas that know me best, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex and my wife was really not with that one she was way more into the she owes you sex but then the o I, the o part was like the feminist group type shit that i was like ah that's the part yeah that's kind of, i mean they're both really edgy but the, like that's the only thing about that line is that it's like gonna it's just the feminists are gonna come out but i mean you don't give a fuck so yeah like, basically well, what I give a fuck about is just you as a person and as a friend. I want things that make you feel good. I don't want to do rap that makes people feel bad. Like, of course, like, I'm mad at Nike and that. So people think, like, oh, he's a bully. He ran on stage with Taylor. He's bullying Nike now, this $50 billion company. I'm Why this... are people saying you're bullying Nike? Because I, cause on facts, like I said, like, uh, Yeezy, they line up for days. Nike out here bad. They can't get shit away. They, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That no, is. That's, I mean, that's just what you do, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I wouldn't say that it's like possible to bully a company like Nike, but yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, what, go with whatever line you think is better. It's obviously very tongue in cheek, either way. Yeah. And I really appreciate you telling me about it. That's really nice. Oh, yeah. I thought I just had a responsibility to you as a friend, you know. And, uh, I mean, thanks for being, like, so cool about it. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. Like, the heads up is so nice. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's, you'd be surprised how many people just do things without, like, even asking or seeing if I'd be okay with it. And I just really appreciate it. Like, I never would have expected you to, like, tell me about a line in one of your but that's really nice that you did. Oh, you mean like unexpected shit? Like you take the time to give someone a really, really valuable award and then they completely run for president right afterwards? Like unexpected <laughs> in that type of way? We have not <laughs> talked about that one. <laughs> what happened? I just thought that was wavy. I was, it was, it, it was vibey. Actually, you know, funny thing, as I thought about <laughs> the weed and the president, both of those things I thought about in the shower the day before I just started laughing like crazy and I was like I gotta say that I had just smoked some weed and then say I'm gonna run for president like it's gonna be so those are my basis of I knew I wanted to say the thing about going to like the Dodgers game with you know my daughter and like getting booed and that being scary and I knew I wanted to say like me changing and thinking about people more since I had a daughter and then I wanted to say the weed thing, and then I wanted to say um, the president thing, and everything else was just like off the cuff. Yeah. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. It was it was definitely like it stole the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was pretty crazy. And then crazy. the flowers that you sent me, hmm? I like Instagrammed a, a picture of them, and it's the most Instagram likes I've ever gotten. It was like two point seven million likes on that picture of the flowers you sent me. Yeah, it's some it's some crazy. it's some connection. Or something that I think is really important about that moment when we met on stage. It's something that I think is really important about that. Like, and where humanity is going, or now where me and Kim are, and having a family, and just everything, the way yeah. things are landing. I always 
relationships are more important than punchlines, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody would listen to that and be like, oh, that's a real, that's a real diss. Like, she must be crying about that line. Um, and I think, I think because of how crazy and strange and fateful the way we met was, I think we have to pick our moments to, like, do stuff together and make sure it's only really cool stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like we can't we can't have it like be somebody else's idea that gets in front of it and they're like because it's only it's if you're like a really true creative, visceral, vibey like person, it's probably hard for you to work at a corporation. So how can you give a creative, you know, creative ideas and you're working in, in a house of non create and non creativity? It's like this weird so as long whenever we talk directly okay now what if later in the song i was also to have said uh i made her famous is that uh is is no, did it, you say that? yes it might have happened oh, God. <laughs> well, what am I gonna do about it? uh I went, like that do the hair flip yeah i mean um mm -hmm. it's just kind of like whatever at this point yeah but i mean got to tell a story the way that it happened to you and the way that you experienced it. Like, you honestly didn't know who I was before that. Like, yeah. it, just, it doesn't matter if I sold 7 million of that album before you did that, which is what happened. You didn't know who I was before that. It's fine. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it's fun. It's it's definitely, uh, you're, 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 uh, uh, you're, you're ready to trend. That's all I can say. Um, what's the song called? Uh, it might be called Hood Famous. Oh, cool. Alright. Um, is it gonna be like a single single, or is it gonna be a SoundCloud release? What are you doing? Oh, this one right here is like... Fucking Song of the Year type territory. Oh my god, yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's crazy, oh my yeah. god. Oh, speaking of Song of the Year, are you going to Grammy? Um... Uh, I, you know, I was thinking to not do it, but I thought, I think that this song, um, uh, I, you know what, I'm going to send you the song and send you the exact wording and everything about it, right? And then we could sit and talk through it. But if the song goes and fucking just. More stuff. They just like look at us and they're like, you already have so much. Even if we've made an incredible achievement, it's harder for people to write down our names for some reason. Mm. I get mm. it. I, I get mean, it. it's just human nature. It's envy. It's asking people in our industry to vote for the people who are already killing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like how every it's like all so many people wanted Meek Mills to win because uh so many people wanted Meek Mills to win because just Drake was just killing it for so long. Mm. And they were just like, we just need, like, Meek Mills to, like, um... But I think, you know, okay, so, my that has my mind going through a lot of uh, places to problem solve. But I, I was talking to Ben Horowitz. Do you know this guy? He's a VC at Dreesen and Horowitz out of San Fran. But he's down with the... I don't know that name. I don't know him. It's just like the San Fran click, you know, that type of thing. Like, he stays down the street from Mark Zuckerberg and shit like that. So, I was talking to him, and I was like, bro, like, like me, I'm in, I'm in personal debt. I'm in debt by a good, like, 20, 30 million ever since the fashion, and still have not made it out of it. So, when I, that's part of the reason why I had to go to Rock Nation and the touring deals, blah, blah, And it allowed the whole town to try to feel like they could control Kanye or either talk to me like I'm regular or have agents do it, but they saw they couldn't. It's like, even in debt, he moves around like he's like a billionaire. I'm like, yeah, I'm a cultural trillionaire. I might have <laughs> financial uh, debt. So I, I told Ben Horowitz, I was like, you guys got you, Mark Zuckerberg, or whoever, Tim Cook, you guys have to clean that up. So I'm sending Ben Horowitz my current balance. That means like, I'm not, not up 50, not up 100 million, not up 200 million, not up 300 million, no, negative 20 million. Currently, I, Kanye West, the guy who created the genre of music that is The weekend, that is Drake, the guy who created yeah. every single person that makes music right now 
favorite album is the college dropout. Every single person that makes music, that is there. And I, but I'm rich enough for, I have my, my wife, like my wife, I went into debt to my wife by six million working on a fucking house less than like a few months ago. And I was able to pay her back before Christmas and shit like that. So, you know, when I talk about Nike, the idea that they wouldn't give me a percentage that I could make something that was so tangible when Drake was just wrapping me into the motherfucking trash can that I could have something that was tangible that showed my creativity and expressed myself that also could be a business that I could have a five times multiple on and actually be able to sell it for like a hundred million, two hundred a billion dollars. That was very serious. Every, every conversation, every time I scream at Charlemagne or scream at Sway, that was really, really, really serious. And it also was with my family. I felt like, look, if I'm just an angry black guy with some cool red shoes from Nike five years ago, I was going to be visiting my daughter as opposed to be living with her. It would have been like enough is enough. It wouldn't have been cool anymore because it would have been a group of people, including my wife, that all had at least like 500, 400 million in their account. And then you get the angry black man at the party talking about, I'm the one that put Kim in the dress. I'm the one that did this. I'm the But it never like... It never realized itself. So that's one of the things I just talked to Ben. And I'm really, because I talk, I mean, I talk about it on the album, talk about personal debt and shit. Just the idea, like, oh shit, this yeah. dude with this fucking Maybach that makes fucking $50 million a tour still hasn't lined it up or came out of the point when AEG and Live Nation wouldn't give him a, a deal. The debt started after, after, the, um, after Watch the Throne. Because I got no deal, but I still was doing like creative projects on my own, shooting a film in Qatar, doing a fashion show, just trying to, you know, be very Disney, be very visceral, be creative. And um, I mean, I'm sure that yeah. I'm sure you've thought about this up and down, but I mean, is there a way to monetize Yeezys in a way that you felt would still keep them authentic but make them into a multi-billion-dollar company? Well, that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're in the Good. plans of. Yeah, I, I, I have no, yeah, I have no, um, I have no, I, I'm 100% going to be like a multi, multi, multi billionaire. I just well, think, yeah. I think it's fun <laughs> that I can like be like Charlie Sheen and be like, hey, like I got AIDS, you know, like that to me, like I told Drake that the other night, I was like, yo, Drake, I'm in personal debt. And to me, for me to tell Drake the fucking number one bachelor in the world that could fucking wrap anybody into a trash can that lives four blocks down the street from my wife and like basically fucks all of her friends that I'm in personal debt is such a like putting down the sword or putting down the hand or opening showing the hand that I don't have my poker face on with any of you guys I'm just me you know I'm just a creative you know everything I did even when it was missed time whatever it might have been from a you know it's always like from a good place and I know that I'll overcome it and I know that the world will overcome it because like I'm going to change the world. I'm going to make it, I'm going to make people's lives better on some post Steve Jobs, Howard Hughes type shit. Like I'm going to do things with education. I'm going to do things that help to calm down mur uh, murders in Chicago or across the globe, things to help down, to calm down police brutality to, to equalize the wealth meets the class system because there's a bunch of classes wealthy people that hate Obama because he's more social and he wants the people who don't have anything to have everything and my in my little way by learning how to design design is something that's only given to the rich currently the exact color palette that Hermes uses versus the color palette that Forever 21 uses a color palette is extremely important color is important you know, the, the knowledge of proportions, you know, the size of our house versus the size of someone else's houses and just the dynamics of the proportion. Like, I don't want this conversation to go too, too long, but I wanted to give you a bit of like where I'm at, the perspective that I'm at and the way, the fact that I am the microprocessor of our culture, meaning like I can figure out how to give Rihanna a Margiela, I mean, a, a Mary J. Blige type album i can figure out how to get the fashion world to accept my wife and thus the whole family i can yeah. figure out i can figure out those are i can figure out a lot of impossible i can figure out how to make something that you're wearing to the airport 
five years after the entire globe was like, hang that nigger alive and, and, and fucking, and let's watch him die slowly, publicly, his, you know? So it's a lot, I figured that out for myself. So it's a lot of shit that we collectively with the power that you have and your fans, the power my wife has, the power that I have, that we can do to really make it where it's not just the rich getting richer, but, you know, you know, make it not just a fucking charity, not sing it for Africa, change things in a way that people can can experience shit themselves, a piece of the good life, you know? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, hmm. they're amazing hmm. ideas and amazing concepts, and I definitely, like, would love to talk to you more about it. I know you have to do something right now, but um, I love that that's where your head is. And, hmm. I, and it's been like that. I mean, when we went to dinner, I mean, it, it was the rumblings of those ideas. Like, I like hmm. that you're always thinking outward. Hmm. And, like, you know, over the last, six, seven, eight years, however long it's been that since that happened, like, I haven't always liked you, but I've always respected you, mm-hmm. and I think that's what you're saying when you say, like, you know, I might be in debt, but I can make these things happen, and I have the idea to do it, and I create these things and concepts, and, like, I'm always going to respect you, and mm-hmm. I'm really glad that you had the respect to, to call me and tell me that as a friend about the song, and... It's just like it's a it's a really cool thing to do, like and a really good show of friendship. So thank you. Oh, thank you too. And you know, if people ask me about it, I'll I think it would be great for me to be like, look, he called me and told me the line before it came out. Like, jokes on you guys, we're fine. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think that's pretty much the switch right there. Yeah. Like, you guys want to call this with you? You want to call this throwing shade? But, you know, right after the song comes out, I'm going to be on a Grammy red carpet, and they're going to ask me about it. I'm going to be like, he called me and sent me the song before it came out. Yeah. So, I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to go lay this verse, and I'm going uh, to uh, send it to you right now. Oh, you're, you, you just, you haven't recorded it yet? I recorded it. I'm, I'm nuancing the lines. Like, the last version of it says, me and Taylor might still have sex. And then my wife was like, that doesn't sound as hard. Well, I mean, she's saying that honestly because she's your wife. Yeah. And, like, um, so I think whatever one you think is actually better, I mean, and obviously do what's best for your relationship, too. Yeah. Um, I think the, like, owes me sex, it, sa- it says different things. It says, like, owes me sex means, like, look, I made her what she is. Like, she actually owes me, which... You know, it's gonna have, it's gonna split people because people who like me are gonna be like, she doesn't know, she doesn't, she doesn't know him shit, <laughs> and like, but then the people who like thought it was like badass and like crazy and awesome that you're so outspoken are gonna be like, yeah, she does. It made her famous. You know, it's more provocative to say might still have sex because <laughs> no one would see that coming. Yeah. Um, they're both really, they're both crazy. Yeah, do what you want. They're both, like, going to get every single headline in the world. Um, Owes Me Sex is a little bit, it's a little, like, it's got a little bit more, like, throws shade. And, like, the other one's more flirtatious. And it just depends on what you want to accomplish with it. Yeah, I think, I feel like with my wife, it that she probably didn't like the might still have sex. It was like, oh, she, it would be like, what if, like, she was on a TV show, like, and said, oh, yeah, I mean, me and Tom Brady might still have sex or something, like, <laughs> do, like, do what's best, like, you just had a, a kid, you're, like, in the best place of your life, like, don't, I wouldn't, um, ever advise you to, like, fuck with that, yeah. but just, like, pick whichever, you know, it's cause and effect, like, one is gonna make people feel a certain way, and it's just gonna be a slightly different emotion for the other, but I don't, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not, it doesn't matter to me. Not, not, there's not, like, one that hurts my feelings and one that doesn't. Yeah. It's just what, what, when I'm pointing this gun, what I, what I tried to do differently than two years ago is, like, when I shoot a gun, I tried to point it away from my face. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, one is kind of, like, a little bit more flirtatious and easier. I think, I think, so really, that means the conversation is really, one is, like, a little bit better for the public and a little bit less 
good for the relationship. One is a little bit worse for the public and better for the relationship. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. All right. Well. But it's your it's your call, really. I mean, you always just you always go with your gut, obviously. Yeah. Okay. But, um, amazing. Send it to me. I'm excited. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks so much. Awesome. I'll talk to you later. All right. Cool. Peace. Bye. Bye. All right. That's fine. All right. We had to get that all the way through. Yeah, sorry, the battery on this thing died. Which is why it's not right. filming. It's just when it died, if you get some shit like Kanye talking to Taylor Swift, explain that line. Oh, I know. There's got to be three cameras on that one. We can't miss one element. 